Gorilla physics. Yeah. The wave speed equation. Every wave has a specific speed in a different medium. We call that a wave speed. If I have a wave on water, now for a certain depth of water, it will always have the same speed. Now watch at the beach next time and you will see each wave comes in with the same speed. The frequency might change, the wavelength might change, but actually they will move towards the beach at the same speed. In um, a vacuum, light will always travel at the same speed. Its frequency might change, its wavelength might change, but its wave speed will always be the same. So wave speed is constant for a given medium. And in the wave speed equation, wave speed equals frequency multiplied by wavelength. We can write this in algebra. V is F times lambda. Funny upside down Y is a Greek letter, lambda. So let's do a typical example then. You've been given some waves, have a wave speed of 20 meters per second. And you're told they come at a frequency of 5 every second. Well, what's the wavelength of those? Let's just do a quick bit of rearranging. I've got times by 5 on this side, so I can do divide by 5 over here. Leaves me with wavelength is 20 divided by 5, so 4. Those waves I was discussing were 4 metres long. When these get a bit difficult is when you're dealing with like very, very large or very, very small numbers. So for example, if this was actually giving you some information about light, let's say red light, which has a wavelength of 7 times 10 to the minus 7 metres, approximately, and you know that the speed of all light in a vacuum or in air is 3 times 10 to the 8 metres per second, What's the frequency that's associated with that red light? Well, okay, rearranging is no harder than before. We can just do the inverse operations. I've got times by seven times 10 to the seven here. So just do divide by seven times 10 to the seven. So frequency is three times 10 to the eight divided by seven times 10 to the minus seven meters. Well, that's quite tricky, really. Yeah, okay, I know from maths that that's um, three and then eight zeros, and that's seven, one zero point, and then six more zeros, then seven. I can do that, I can use standard form. But in my calculator, as a shortcut. I don't have to write all the zeros where I could easily make a mistake. I use my times 10 to the button, times 10 to the eight, divided by seven, times 10 to the minus seven, equals... 4.3, bit of rounding, times 10 to the 14. And that's a frequency, so it's got the unit hertz. 4.3 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So red light oscillates 4.3 times 10 to the 14 times every single second, which is quite a high frequency. Hopefully then, with this, you can understand that the electromagnetic spectrum is all the same, it's just going from high wavelength and low frequency over at this end to low wavelength, short wavelength and high frequency at this end. And we just remember them in order, uh, radio waves, microwaves uh, infrared visible light ultraviolet light x-rays 
and gamma rays. So this is actually an application of the equation I've just been talking to you about. If the wave speed stays the same, if wavelength increases, well, frequency has to decrease. So microwaves and x-rays are the same thing. They're all electromagnetic radiation. But x-rays has a very high frequency. Whereas microwaves and radio waves have a much lower frequency. Whereas radio waves has a high wavelength, gamma rays, x-rays, this end, has a very low wavelength, very short wavelength. Thanks for watching this video from Gorilla Physics. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, why not go ahead and subscribe. I hope you found it useful, so please tell your friends, and every like and share that we get helps us be more useful to more people.